The Downers Grove Historical Society invites you to view the life and times of James Henry Breston. This video was prepared by Virginia Staney, who selected the photograph and wrote the script. And I am Andrew Dunham, the author of Biographies for Young Readers, and co-author with Pauline Wanschneider of the History of Downers Grove, 1832 to 1982. And now, the Downers Grove Historical Society is proud to present Dr. James Henry Breston, world-renowned archaeologist, Egyptologist, and historian. The small boy, who was to become perhaps the most distinguished citizen to come from Downers Grove, moved to this village with his family in the summer of 1873. Over the years, this boy became famous as an archaeologist and historian whose name was well known for his exploration in ancient sites in Egypt and the area known today as the Middle East. He traveled the Nile, exploring the temples and pyramids, such sites as this early terraced pyramid at Saqqara. He translated ancient languages like these hieroglyphics on the walls of tombs and temples. He wrote books which were translated into the major languages of Europe and the Middle East. He reaped honors and renown, was consulted by soldiers and statesmen, and was received by kings. He was James Henry Breston, who knew Egypt and the lands of the ancient Near East as intimately as a prairie country of his Downers Grove boyhood. James Breasted was born in Rockford, Illinois in 1865, which was a year the Civil War ended. His family lived there until two years after the Chicago fire, which had destroyed his father's business. So in 1873, the family moved to Downers Grove. It was a rainy day in 1873 when Jimmy, with his father and mother, descended from a local train in Downers Grove and looked down a very muddy main street adorned with only a half dozen muddy farm wagons. James' father, Charles Preston, bought 20 acres of land on the extreme northern fringe of the village. Only 30 years earlier, this land had been deeded by the United States government to the original land-grant settler, Gary Smith, the son-in-law of Pierce Downer, the founder of the village. A year later, in 1874, Charles built a modest home on the tree-lined road called Main Street, which is now Highland Avenue, and he called it the Pine because of the row of pine trees stretching north to Ogden Avenue. This home still stands at 4629 Highland. Because of its historical significance, the Downers Grove Historical Society marked it with a plaque that reads, The Pines, Boyhood Home, 1874 to 1890, of James Henry Breasted, 
renowned Egyptologist, founder of Oriental Institute, University of Chicago. This plaque was placed in 1980 by the Downers Grove Historical Society. Jimmy Breston grew up in this home. His boyhood was typical of the other young boys during the 1870s and 80s in Downers Grove. He milked a cow, helped care for a horse, and weeded the garden. He probably fished at Prince Pond, made and flew kites, and played with friends. In the evening, he read books from his father's library. James went to school in the Little Red Schoolhouse on the site of present-day Lincoln Center. One May morning in 1878, he sat at his desk, bent over his copy book, writing the answer to the examination questions on the blackboard. The second question read, name the bodies of water you would sail on in going from Cairo, Illinois, to Cairo, Egypt. Jimmy wrote, the Mississippi River, through the Gulf of Mexico, Florida Strait, across the Atlantic Ocean, through the Straits of Gibraltar, the Mediterranean Sea, and to the Nile River. James' son, in the biography of his father, pioneer to the past, quoted this incident, almost prophetic of Breston's future so many years before his career as an Egyptologist. Jimmy participated in various school programs. He was on the program for the first graduation from the 10-year graded program in 1879 when there were only five graduates. The following year, he himself completed the course of study offered in Downers Grove. During his student days here, the two-room schoolhouse was added to and became a four-room school. In 1913, that building was torn down when the high school was built. On Sundays, the Breasted family attended the first congregational church on Curtis Street. James sat in Sunday school with a group of village boys with their heads together over the Bible as they struggled with the difficult proper name of an old Hebrew chronicle. Years later, James Breasted became an authority in reading and translating not only Hebrew, but also many of the ancient languages of the Near East, including the hieroglyphs of Egypt. Breasted attended the village school until he was 15 when his parents sent him off to Northwestern College, which is now North Central College in Naperville. During his freshman year, he studied chemistry and botany, and then he worked in the pharmacy of his brother-in-law in Rochelle, Illinois. The following year, he worked in the Downers Grove Pharmacy of A.S. Carpenter at the corner of Main and Curtis Street, and he continued at Northwestern College where he began to study Latin. In 1886, Breasted actually received a degree from the Chicago College of Pharmacy, but he felt he was called to preach the gospel. So he enrolled in the Congregational Institute, now the Chicago Theological Seminary. However, he became so interested in Hebrew and the other ancient languages, he decided to return to Northwestern to complete his work on his A.B. degree so that he could go on to Yale, where he learned to speak, write, and translate 12 languages, including Aramaic, the language Jesus spoke. After receiving his master's degree at Yale, he went on to the University of Berlin because it was the best teaching and research center in the whole world for Eastern languages and Egyptology. From this famous university, when he was only 28 years old, he received a doctorate in 1894, becoming the first 
American Egyptologist. Immediately after graduation, while still in Germany, James married Frances Hart, an American girl whom he had met in Berlin. This is James and Frances, pictured with Frances' sister and an unidentified child. They honeymooned in Egypt, most of the time living on the Nile on this kind of a boat called a Dahabaya as they explored various ancient sites on the Nile. James and Francis Breasted sailed the Nile in their modest small Dahabaya past simple villages and elegant ancient temples. They reached Luxor in early December of 1894 and James had to stop at the Temple of Karnak. He said, for three days from dawn to dark, I never lost a moment copying inscriptions. And on one night at Karnak, I copied by moonlight. The silver light streamed down through the broken roof of the vast colonnaded hall. Resta said, I shall remember that evening until my dying day. They sailed south on the Nile to Aswan, passing the many temples, and they stopped at the island of Philae, where they wandered through the famous, almost perfectly preserved, lovely Ptolemaic temple. It became clearer and clearer to Dr. Breston that the hieroglyphics on the walls of these massive temples had to be recorded and translated before they completely disappeared in the erosion of the weather and of time. In 1895, William Rainey Harper appointed Breasted as assistant in Egyptology at the University of Chicago and assistant director of the Haskell Oriental Museum, a forerunner to the Oriental Institute. He both taught and he led archaeological expeditions to search for and bring back to the museum artifacts of Egypt, the Bible lands, Iraq, and Iran. In 1905, 1906, and 1907, he led an expedition to ancient Nubia. His party was the first scientific expedition to run the dangerous rapids of the fourth cataract of the Nile, and this camp is near the fourth cataract. Because Dr. Breasted spent so much time on his expeditions to Egypt and the Near East, he often took his family with him, and this picture shows the family astride camels near the second cataract of the Nile in northern Sudan. Abu Simbel, the great temple of Ramses II, the Egyptian pharaoh who lived from 1298 to 1232 BC, Dr. and Mrs. Breston and their son Charles at Abu Simbel in 1906 or 1907. Note Dr. Breston perched above the forehead of one of the four monumental statues of Ramses II. Along with all the archaeological exploration and the scholarly translation and interpretation of the ancient languages, Dr. Breston also was a fundraiser when he convinced John D. Rockefeller to support the founding in 1919 of the Oriental Institute at the University of Chicago. Dr. Breston wrote many books and articles about Egypt and the Near East. His term, the Fertile Crescent, is still used to describe the land in ancient Mesopotamia the cradle of civilization around the eastern end of the Mediterranean Sea and extending eastward to Iraq and Iran. This picture was taken in 1920 when Dr. Breasted led an expedition into Iraq. He is in the center of this group. In 1922, a discovery of magnificent importance has special significance to Downers Grove when the now world-famous Dr. James Henry Breasted witnessed the breaking of the seals to the burial chamber 
of King Tutankhamun. Breasted was awestruck at the sight. Statues, vases, jewelry, solid gold encrusted with jewels and inscribed with hieroglyphics, along with all the furnishings that King Tut would require in the afterlife. Lord Carnarvon had financed Howard Carter's excavations in the Valley of the Kings. This picture shows Carnarvon, Carter, Dr. Breasted, and others at the site of the tomb. When Carter had first uncovered the entrance to the antechamber, he was disappointed to find a small area with a different seal. His spirits fell as he sensed that robbers had entered the tomb, and he feared the tomb would be empty. He called on Breasted to decipher the seals imprinted on the plaster. Breasted determined that the break-in had occurred shortly after the tomb was first sealed, and before the massive plundering of tombs, which was prevalent later. He also confirmed that King Tut was the tomb's owner. The fear of the curse of death on anyone who entered a tomb had persisted through the years. And to dispel this myth, Dr. Breasted, Howard Carter, and others who were closely associated with the opening of the tomb had dined in the tomb of Ramses VI, adjoining the burial chamber of King Tut. By 1932, the Oriental Institute at the University of Chicago had established itself as a major archaeological organization. The explorations under their direction were active in Persia, Iraq, Assyria, Egypt, Turkey, Palestine, and ancient Babylonia. At about this time, Breasted began using a biplane for aerial expeditions as a tool in identifying from the air possible archaeological sites. That same year, Dr. James Henry Breston found time to visit the village of his boyhood when Downers Grove celebrated its centennial. He reminisced about his growing up years and of the Sunday school class where he had become enormously interested in the ancient Orient, with the stories of the prophets, which he said undoubtedly had affected his later life. The following year, 1933, Dr. Breasted's picture was on the cover of the December 14th issue of Time magazine, with their feature story covering his worldwide accomplishments as a noted Egyptologist Orientalist and scholar. Many priceless artifacts have been brought to the Oriental Institute from Egypt and the Middle East, and much valuable research on early Egypt and other ancient civilizations continue there. Among the Institute's many exhibits and artifacts are the Sumerian temple figures, clay figures, from a burial group included in a tomb based on the Egyptian belief that these servants were to accompany the dead ruler to take care of his needs in the hereafter. The walls of the Egyptian tombs were covered with these beautiful paintings which have enabled archaeologists to learn about the life, dress, religion, animals, and customs of the early Egyptians. These huge pillars, topped with heads of horses, were part of a palace in Pertopolis, capital of ancient Persia. This massive human-headed animal, carved in alabaster, was one of two matching guard figures, which were located outside of King Saragon II's palace before 700 BC. The bull stands 16 feet high 
and weighs 40 tons. The wall in the gallery of the Oriental Institute was built around this bull after it was put in place. Imagine the formidable task of handling, protecting, and transporting this colossus over dirt roads to a seaport and then shipping it to its resting place at the Oriental Institute. The very presence of the Oriental Institute is a memorial to the work of Dr. James Henry Brested, as well as his many contributions to the museum in Cairo, Egypt, and also to the University of Chicago Museum at Luxor. The village of Downers Grove, the boyhood home of Brested, has also honored his memory by dedicating the auditorium at the Park District's Lincoln Center to Dr. James Henry Breston. In 1973, Marjorie Wyman, Public Relations Chairperson of the Downers Grove Historical Society, later she was president of the society, and she was longtime secretary of the Boards of Education in Districts 58 and 99, became deeply interested in the life and accomplishments of Dr. Breston when she and her husband, Charles, visited Egypt. On their return to Downers Grove, Mrs. Wyman learned more about this internationally recognized archaeologist who had lived in Downers Grove as a youth. At the library, she found Breston's biography, Pioneer to the Past, which had been written by his son, Charles. References to Downers Grove and his boyhood here were numerous. As she read his fascinating story, Mrs. Wyman felt strongly that Breston should be honored in the town where he grew up, and for which, through the years, he had felt such a warm affection. Added impetus came when James Breston Jr. on the left and his wife Helen on the right visited here in 1978 and stayed with Catherine and Walter Scott who owned the former Breston homestead at that time. James Jr. recalled that the last time he had visited Downers Grove was in 1932, 46 years before, when he came with his father to Downers Grove Centennial Celebration. The Scots invited the Wymans to meet the Breston, along with Pauline Wanschneider, the curator of the Historical Museum. This picture shows Marjorie and Charles Wyman on the left, Pauline Juan Schneider, James Breston Jr., his wife Helen, and Catherine Scott. When visiting the Scots, James Breston Jr. recalled the excitement of the Breston family's view of the treasuries of King Tut's tomb in 1922 before the discovery was made public. He described how the grandeur of those gold treasures was indelibly imprinted on his memory. It was Mrs. Wyman's suggestion that the auditorium at the remodeled Lincoln Center be named in Dr. Breston's memory, since he had attended the small schoolhouse located on that site where Lincoln Center now stands. And 1980 would be appropriate since it marked the 100th anniversary of his completion of the course of study offered there. The Downers Grove Historical Society wholeheartedly embraced Marge Wyman's suggestion, and Pauline Wanschneider took the proposal to the park commissioners who approved naming the auditorium in Breston's memory. The village council declared November 9, 1980, James Henry Breston Day the dedication began at 1 p.m. in the auditorium, with many local notables sharing in the impressive ceremony, including those in this picture. Immediately following the ceremony, a film from the Oriental Institute was shown, which included a segment of Dr. Breston explaining the work of the Oriental Institute. Though Dr. Breston's son, James Jr., was unable to attend, he sent a letter to the people of Downers Grove, and I quote, Throughout his life, Dr. James Henry Breston 
had a special affection for Donna's Grove. The old swimming hole, the village blacksmith shop, the small burial plot where Pierce Downer lies buried, the marshes full of birds and small animals, all were graven on his memory and were shown to me as a young child when he brought his family to view the much loved scenes of his boyhood. He admired the hardy pioneers who established the prairie settlements like Downers Grove. He spent his life exploring and documenting the history of the ancient past, providing us with a long, uninterrupted view of history as a whole. Dr. James Henry Breston became a renowned pioneer to the past.